Iranian films are often humanist social dramas that explore a seemingly minimalist storyline. But through the art of illusion, they are rich in political subtext. The tension between religion and culture, as well as conformity and individual desire, create a riveting viewing experience. To be able to express emotions and create chemistry between the characters, Iranian filmmakers often lean on traditional elements such as rich heritage of poetry and Sufi storytelling that combine allegory and spiritual elements to circumvent social and cultural mores. In this essay, we focus on award-winning artistic Iranian movies that have been praised worldwide. At number 10 we have The Salesman. Asghar Farhadi is widely regarded as one of the world's leading dramatists working today, delivering tightly knotted narratives that expertly blend a nerve-shredding tension with an acutely observed realism. His 2017 masterpiece The Salesman won the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film and also won the Best Screenplay for Farhadi and the Best Actor for Hosseini at the 2016 Cannes Festival. This movie tells the story of a married couple who performed the play Death of a Salesman on stage. Aside from the narrative of the play, the wife is assaulted and the husband is out to find the attacker since she refuses to take legal action and is suffering from PTSD. The Salesman is about trust and honor, about violence against women in a patriarchal society, about the woe that is in marriage, but is also about death. A Salesman and its hidden brutality of class. The movie is a psychological and moral drama about how one man's anger and damaged self-image drives him to the brink of destroying the very thing he ostensibly wants to save the most, his marriage. Like Farhadi's other movies in The Salesman, Farhadi manages to take a failed, fairly straightforward social realist narrative and apply it to a more ambiguous structure with a more complex insight into the characters portrayed. At number 9 we have Where is the Friend's House by Abbas Kiorostemi. This movie is the first of the three interrelated films in Abbas Kiarostami's Kokir Trilogy, named after the northern Iranian village where the films are set. The boy searches for the home of his classmate, whose school notebook he has accidentally taken. And the director transforms this trip into a miraculous child's eye adventure of the everyday. As our young hero zigzags determinedly across two towns, aided and sometimes misdirected by those he encounters, his quest becomes both a revealing portrait of rural Iranian society in all its richness, complexity, and, uh, and a touching parable about the meaning of personal responsibility. Sensitive and profound, Where is the Friend's House is shot through with all the beauty, tension, and wonder in a single day can contain. Where is the Friend's House has all the qualities that put Iranian cinema on the map. Formal simplicity, emotional directness, and the use of children as a window into society's ills. Hope beneath the film's surface and you'll find a movie about the moral duties we owe to each other and into society, what it means to be a good person, and about taking care of one another. At number 8 we have Gabbe. Gabbe is a magical and visually stunning film set in the arid countryside of Iran. An old man and woman have a richly colored carpet that they cherish. Suddenly, Gabbe, a beautiful young woman, appears before them. She has worn the carpet and is the spirit of the carpet. Her story unspools before their eyes. The protagonist is the personification of the Gabbe rug, a type of Persian rug woven by nomadic Kashgar tribes. Agape is woven throughout the seasons, narrating a story with minimalist depictions alongside weaving processes. Writer and director Mohsen Mahbalbov 
is an inventive fabulist who uses color, character, fantasy, reality, and spirituality to convey the mysteries of love, family, ritual, and creativity. The movie shows us how nomadic tribes take the colors from nature and dye their fabric. Color is given a history. The sheep is fed on greenery. The wool is shorn for clothing. Flowers boiled for color. And the cash guy who wear these colors in clothes as an homage to nature. This poetic and picturesque movie celebrates the gnarled beauty of the natural world, the art of weaving, and the unique way that stories give life and shape and meaning. Yappe is a sense Lucius film that stays with you long after the closing credits. At number 8 we have The White Balloon. In director Jafar Panahi's debut feature, The White Balloon, written by Abbas K. Rastami, Panahi focuses on a young girl as she wanders through the Iranian capital of Tehran on her way to buy goldfish. Encountering various adults who ignore or refuse to help her when she loses her money. <laughs> Panahi's film effectively shows that singular perspective of a child going through a typical mundane task, as the imbalanced power dynamic between the child and the surrounding adults is heavily reinforced. The brilliance of the film is in its simplicity. The story that unfolds is about the little girl's adventure with the shop owner and the strangers on the street who she's not supposed to talk to, but does so regardless. We get caught up in it because it's so universally understood. Panahi's humanistic approach towards the perspective of a young girl allows her voice to be heard, whereas such voices are often silenced by an older, male-centric world. Panahi allows the wishes of the child to be just as valuable as those of adults, an ability that children in the real world often lack. At number 6 we have About Ali. In About Ali, Asghar Farhadi asks questions about our capacity for deception. A drama thriller feature about a woman who goes missing on a short vacation outside of Tehran. A group of friends rent a villa on the Caspian Sea. They bring along their families with their kids, but one of them brings with her the kindergarten teacher of her daughter as she plans to act as a matchmaker between her and her divorced friend. They all seem to be having a great time until Ellie, the previously mentioned teacher, is asked to look after the kids playing near the sea. And then, in the next scene, she disappears. Her mysterious disappearance sets in motion a series of deceptions and revelations that threaten to shatter everything they hold dear. The movie has a dramatic structure that's like peeling an onion. First layer we see seem familiar and self-evident, but the more layers we reach, the more complex the whole becomes. It's breezy, then suspenseful, and gradually crushing sad. On its own terms, it's a perfect film. At number 5 we have The Color of Paradise. In Majid Majidi's fourth film, which won the Best Picture Award at Montreal International Film Festival, we meet Mohammed, an 8-year-old boy who is blind, lives with his father, two sisters and grandmother in a small village. The story follows the plight of both Muhammad and his father, who is hoping to remarry following the death of his wife. Compared by many to Federico Fellini's La Strada, partially due to the film's end, The Color of Paradise is a rich and textured portrait 
of family life as it is preoccupied with the often strained relationship between father and son. It also features an endearing performance by the whole cast and is a powerhouse of emotions that touches to the very core of who we are as humans. It is a transcendent film, deeply committed to and beautifully wrote. It will make anyone who sees it look at the world with new eyes. <laughs> At number 4 we have Turtles Can Fly. This 2004 film is made by Bahman Ghabadi and won several awards including the best film at the San Sebastian International Film Festival. The film follows a young Kurdish boy named Satellite. Satellite leads a gang of children, many of whom are missing limbs as a result of numerous landmines on the border. They work together to clear the landmines and resell them to the United Nations. As the film unravels, we discover the relationship between the children and the stories of their past traumas. Turtles Can Fly is a sharp and disturbing dose of reality for those who are concerned with, with their own problems. Kobadi has some extraordinary crowd scenes and remarkable spectacles involving non-professionals, an authentic landscape of deprivation which he weaves into a heartfelt story of his own devising. He also has a journalist's feel for what is relevant combined with a distinctively spiritual capacity for calm. It is a fiercely somber story, compelling sighted in here and now. Turtles Can Fly is a testament to the resilience of these brave children and their undying hope to one day live in peace. At number 3 we have Children of Heaven. The 1999 Academy Award nominee for the Best Foreign Language Film of the Year and award winner at Singapore, Warsaw and Newport Film Festivals, directed by Majid Majidi, it is the story of a boy from a poor family who loses his sister's only pair of shoes. Since the family cannot afford to buy a new pair, the siblings decide not to tell anything to their parents and share the brother's shoes until they find a solution. The film follows the story of the siblings as the brother tries to buy new shoes for his younger sister without burdening his parents. Children of Heaven is full of emotional scenes and pure lessons of kindness and empathy, a heartfelt masterpiece that teaches us compassion. Majid Majidi's strength lies in the fact that he has mastered the art of keeping things simple. There are no fancy camera angles or deeply rooted philosophies about love and life. Not many people understand kids and their relationships with each other like he does. And that's what helps him conjure a fairy tale like story set in a conservative rural Iranian home. At number two, we have Taste of Cherry. the first Iranian film to capture the Palme d'Or. Directed by Abbas Kiyar Rostami, this 1997 movie is profound and frustrating, and controversial for exactly that reason. The movie tells the journey of a man who has lost all love for life and wants someone to bury him after he takes his own life. He meets different types of people and requests them to bury him if he's dead in exchange for money. Everyone tries to show him a different perspective, but he is not interested in sermons. What makes the film interesting is that at no point of time does the director explain the reason behind his unhappiness. 
a film that provokes existential questions. Few films have the essence of being both stragglingly powerful and simplistic like Taste of Cherry, patiently taking its time to let events unfold and hitting a balance of seriousness and honesty that succeeds in never being overbearing. There's always a human quality that gleams in Abbas Rostami's films. His signature minimalist style of filmmaking, emphasizing on atmosphere, tone, and dialogue, moves at a languid pace. His presentation is grounded, utilizing long one-shot takes, stationary camera movement, and lengthy conversations that inhibit a fly-on-wall feeling as though the audience is a third passenger listening into the character's ramblings. It's a quiet celebration of life, covered in a serene bleakness, one that slightly grabs our attention and does not let go. The film also features a bizarre twist at the end, subtle, provocative, and ambiguous. Taste of Cherry, in all its minimalist glory, has earned its spot in the Criterion Collection the list of best films ever made. پدر مادر گوشم به عهده خودت که تصمیم میگیره حالی که دارن جدا میشن از این بابت با کدومشون میخوای زندگی کنی؟ با بابات میخوای بشی تو با مامانت. At number 1 we have a separation. The first Iranian film to win an Academy Award and Golden Globe for best foreign language film. The film dealt with a couple who are on the verge of divorce. <laughs> they live with their husband's father and their daughter. The reason for the conflict is that the husband isn't ready to leave his father while the wife wants to move out for the future of their daughter. The Separation is a morally complex movie without being morally confusing. It is dramatically tense and emotionally powerful without being melodramatic and emotionally overwhelming. And it is sympathetic to all characters and viewpoints while affirming the power of truth and love. Do you want to go to the house with my dad? It's done. Today I'm going to the house. Indeed, there are no antagonists in this film. All of the characters are inherently good and are simply striving to survive against life's challenges. What distinguishes a separation from other Oscar-nominated dramas is the fact that it is a portrayal of the experience of an entire nation contained in an engaging story based on the realities of present-day Iranian society. <laughs>